Hi, my name is Amy Benoit. I'm the curator here at the Galt Museum and Archives, and I'd like to give you a bit of an introduction to one of our current exhibits called Swing, Music of the Home Front. So during the Second World War from 1939 to 1945, there was a lot of visible signs of war here in Lethbridge. There were a number of air training schools as part of the British Commonwealth Air Training Plan. There was the prisoner of war camp, which was the largest in Canada, and it was uh, built to accommodate 12,500 prisoners captured from uh, battle overseas, Ger German military personnel. And uh, of course, people were joining up to serve in the military services as well. But on the other hand, there were some bright spots. Um, there was actually a really lively social dance scene in Lethbridge. And of course, this was the era of the big band and the swing music. And so uh, that was something that kind of kept people's spirits up during that difficult time. Uh, Lethbridge had three main dance halls. There was the Trianon Ballroom, and that was located on the corner of First Avenue and Fifth Street up on the second floor. There was the Henderson Lake Dance Pavilion. And there was the Rainbow Ballroom up on the north side. And all three were hopping several times a week with live musicians. So one of the most popular dance bands here in southern Alberta during the Second World War was called the Anderson Sisters. And these were four sisters who were born in Monitor, Alberta. Florence, Marie, Ruth, and Alice Anderson. And these four sisters grew up with music. They started training in various musical instruments right from a young age. And in 1937, the family moved into Lethbridge. And almost right away, their father, Martin, got them a, a job playing on air on CJOC radio several times a week. The Anderson Sisters became one of the biggest dance bands in southern Alberta. And they played at the Trianon Ballroom, at the Henderson Lake Dance Pavilion, and at Waterton Lakes Dance P Pavilion. And they were actually the longest running band at Waterton, running for about five summers in a row. So we have a few artifacts here at the Galt Museum and Archives that relate to the Anderson Sisters. We have Alice's clarinet that she used uh, as a member of the Anderson Sisters dance band. And we also have her cap. Um, so the sisters, when they were performing on stage, all wore matching uniforms and they kind of mimicked a military sort of style. Um, and they were very meticulous. So they wore matching jewelry. They had matching pencils that they would keep on their music stand. So these are some examples of uh, the style that they projected as members of a, a touring dance band. Another one of the really popular dance bands in Lethbridge was the Alberta Ranch Boys. And this was a cowboy swing band. So they formed in 1937. It was a group of friends that got together and formed this band. And they played in the Lethbridge Exhibition Parade just three days after they formed as a band. Uh, pretty soon they were touring all over British Columbia. And they landed in Vancouver, where they got a regular gig playing on live radio shows for uh, military personnel. So this band uh, became extremely popular. They toured across Canada, and they were actually invited to play in New York. But because the, the band members uh, felt that they needed to be a little closer to home and started to settle down with families, they decided to give up the touring life and uh, stay closer to home here in Lethbridge. So we have examples of a few of the pieces of the uniforms that the Alberta Ranch Boys wore when they were touring and playing. Uh, one of the outfits here, the shirt, was part of their outfit that they used when they were touring on the rodeo circuit. Uh, and the red boots belonged to Joe Horhauser. And a little bit later on, they decided to wear matching blazers while they performed on stage as, as part of a dance band, just to project a bit of a different image. But uh, this band played together for many years. Some of the members changed over time, but they were definitely one of the long-standing big bands in Lethbridge. Lethbridge had a huge prisoner of war camp during the Second World War. It was built to accommodate about 12,500 prisoners. And these were German military personnel who were captured in battle, mainly in North Africa. So to accommodate this uh, number of prisoners, there was all kinds of facilities built in North Lethbridge. And there were two recreation halls as part of the camp that could ha each house up to about 5,000 people. Uh, the camp had a number of uh, recreational opportunities, so they could do some physical activities and some sports. But they also had a lively uh, musical kind of culture at the camp. So there was a string band, there was an orchestra, they had live theater productions, and they did operas, etc. And so we have some of the instruments here at the Galt Museum and Archives that were used as part of uh, the musical uh, groups in the prisoner of war camp. This tuba was captured, uh, or was brought with one of the captured personnel from North Africa. It was made in Germany and played here in Lethbridge. And the accordion was also played in the camp. But these instruments following the Second World War, once the prisoners were repatriated back to Germany, they stayed in the community and they were used by youth bands after the Second World War. 
So all of the foxtrots, the waltzes, the jiving that was happening during the Second World War, this was really a, a time when people were coming together and looking for bright spots in the very difficult times of war. And this was a way that the community was finding some resilience and some, some manner of joy and hope. After the Second World War, big band music continued to be popular, but really its heyday had passed.